housing is a major headache especially for new students where would i stay how much does it cost what are the things that i need to look out for before i finalize an apartment or a place to stay in us now these questions if not taken care of right away can cause so many headaches down the road so let's answer these questions and some more in this video also if you have a question that i didn't answer in this video let me know in the comment section below so i can answer them for you with that let's jump right into the video Hey y'all welcome back to another video of the series life in US. This is a series where I talk about what you should do in US, how my journey was, what to expect and so much more. So if this is the first time you are on this channel make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now I have been in this country while shooting this video for more than 4 years and I have always found housing to be one of the most stressful things to take care of. Now there are a few things which you need to watch out for before you finalize on a house so that you don't have any problems down the road. I'll tell you more about those things in this video. Also, I'll be telling you about different type of housing options in US and later in the video I'll take you on an apartment tour to give you an idea of what an apartment in United States looks like. Now, if you want to jump to any particular part of the video, I'll leave the timestamps in the description for your convenience. There are three basic things which you need to look out for, but many students miss out on these details and I've seen so many students have problems down the line. First one is utilities. So utilities are expensive in this country. You might think an apartment would cost you some x dollars, but if the utilities aren't included in the rent, be prepared to pay so much more. Now the average cost of utilities ranges from city to city, state to state and even zip code. So before you go and finalize the lease, try to find out how much the average cost of utilities per month would be. It would give you a rough idea of how much would go out of your pocket and in this country managing expenses is one of the most difficult things a student has to do. Now there are even places that have utilities included in the rent. My current place has utilities included in the rent. So there is no surprise factor and I know how much I have to pay each month for my living expenses. In my personal experience I have always found utilities being included in the rent as a big headache saver. So if you are finding a place where they have utilities covered try considering that. One of the reason why I'm not the biggest fan of utilities not being included in the rent is my friend's experience. So my friend used to stay in a place where the rent was cheaper than mine, but utilities accounted for almost 20% of the rent. And after totaling it, it went way above what I was paying and there was a constant uncertainty factor in his mind. So yeah, the first point to take care of is utilities. Find out if they are included in the rent or not and if they are not, how much extra you will have to pay every month. Point number 2 Find out if your apartment is furnished or not. Contrary to utilities, furniture is cheaper in this country. Therefore, it is always better to get an unfurnished apartment. So now since the furniture is cheap, you should get an unfurnished apartment and then decorate it yourself. Also, people usually give out their used furniture which is in good shape for absolutely free most of the times. Not only the new furniture, I have seen people give out their used furniture which is in flawless shape for absolutely no money at all. Every other day on Facebook marketplace I see big yard sale postings and someone moving out so they are practically giving out furniture for free. You just need to rent a van, truck or car depending on the furniture you want and get your friends along and get the stuff for free. Also if this is not something for you and you want to buy brand new furniture let it be from IKEA, Amazon or some other place, you can buy it and then sell it off after you are done studying or you are moving cities. Also if you stay near universities which I am sure most of the students do, you can easily sell off common furnitures like chair, table, bed etc. Now let's talk about furnished apartments. The biggest advantage of furnished apartment is that you don't have the stress of decorating or getting new furniture. You just bring in your bags, settle right in and focus on what you are here to do in this country. But this convenience comes at a price. You in a furnished apartment end up paying so much more than someone in an unfurnished apartment. Now the rent difference of almost 2-3 to three months between a furnished apartment and an unfurnished apartment is enough for you to buy the entire furniture brand new. So while it is easier and convenient to get a furnished apartment, long term wise getting an unfurnished apartment is the smart thing to do. Now the third and the most important point which you need to look out for before finalizing a place is the locality where you would be staying in. This is a place where if you have to pay more to get an apartment which is in a good location near restaurants, good public transportation, near school, go and pay that extra dollar. Now in US it's a car culture. If you are living away from campus or somewhere where there's no good public transportation, you would need a car to even go to a grocery store. I lived in an apartment which was not super close to campus, didn't have much great connectivity and I didn't have a car. 
and God knows how depressing it was, especially in the winter months. I had to take Uber to go anywhere and it costed so much at the end of the term that I decided to get a place near the campus and near good transportation. So you might see apartments slash houses which are way cheaper compared to something which is closer to university. Always look up on Google Maps how much is the distance, how far is it from the nearest shopping center and then decide. If you have to pay more to get access to the apartment which is closer to campus, other student communities, shopping centers like Target, Walmart, don't hesitate and pay that extra dollar. Don't think much on this, just select a good location. So yeah, these are the three main things which you need to look out for before you finalize a place. Also let me know in the comments if you want an in-depth video of how you can search for houses or good apartments or roommates in this country. If you are interested, I'll make one. Now let's move on to the next section of the video which is types of housing in this country. There are again mainly three broad categories of housing types in US. First of them are private apartments. This is the most common of all other options but it is also the most expensive. These apartments usually have furnished bedrooms, great facilities for gym, libraries, etc. Like literally top of the class services. Depending on the city you are in, renting bedrooms in these apartments could easily be thousand plus dollars. Like in College Park for example, we have lot of private apartments, Terrapin, Rova City and many more new coming up. So if you have money and you want to live a great lifestyle, going with these apartments is a great option. To give you an idea about how these apartments are and what amenities do they offer, I'll link a few private housing apartments in the description. So yeah, feel free to go and check them out. But yeah, at the end of the video, because the second housing type is individual townhouses. These are typical American houses that you see in movies and shows. Big wooden houses with ample parking space, big backyard, living room, dining room and so much more. Usually students form groups to rent out the entire place to stay with their friends. Now if you have a group of friends and you want to live together, this is an amazing choice. But it is also very common for students to rent individual rooms and not the entire house. One major thing to look out for in these houses is the locality. Usually these houses are away from campus so first check what you're getting into before you finalize this house. Average cost of a bedroom in these townhouse in College Park would be around $500 to $900. Final rent amount would also depend on other factors like are the utilities included in, is it furnished and so on. In my experience, I have found living in such townhouses amazing and would definitely recommend if you find a good one. This brings us to the third broad category of housing, university affiliated apartments. These are usually residential complexes which are affiliated with universities but are not managed by universities. An example of university managed housing would be dorms. Now since these apartments are affiliated with university, the rent is pretty low on these ones. Now since the rent is low, don't expect these apartments to be as luxurious as the first two options. But they are safe, you find lot of students staying in these apartments, so you are bound to make new friends and these are usually close to campus so traveling won't be an issue. Now looking at all the positives you might think, oh I should go and get this one. Yes you should, but there's a catch. These apartments are always in demand and it is very difficult to find one. Everyone wants them and why won't they? An example of such housing in College Park would be Graduate Hill, Graduate Gardens and Courtyards. So if you manage to get a bedroom in this apartment or the entire apartment, just take it, don't think about it. Now speaking about Graduate Gardens, this brings us to the third part of the video, the apartment tour. So my friend was generous enough to let me shoot a video for you guys of an apartment tour of how an American apartment looks like. So make sure to hit that like button and if this video reaches 200 likes, I'll treat them to an ice cream. Having said that, let's go take a tour. So this is what a graduate gardens apartment looks like. This is the living room, the big living room. Uh, this, you can keep sofa couches the TV and stuff everything like my friend has a scooter park so yeah if you haven't checked out the scooter video again link in description I got myself one uh, but yeah let's go straight to the room there are two rooms in this apartment this is the bigger room that is the smaller room and that is the washroom so let's start with the bigger room so this is what the bigger room lives, looks like the person who's gonna shift in hasn't come yet this is their bed uh, this is the front view window up of the apartment we came right from there so it's a pretty big room this is a queen size bed you can have a queen king size bed have a table i've seen people having television in their room this is their closet 
you can have multiple suitcases dresser hangers and everything so this is the bigger room uh, one of the rooms is bigger in this apartment and one of the rooms is a smaller one so yeah again uh, this is an unfurnished apartment so this is what it looks like the person who came who, who stayed before here left the bed for the next person they people usually buy out stuff like i mentioned earlier in the video so it's really easy uh, we'll close the blinds for now so you see it gets pretty dark if you need to oh uh, we'll just close the door next we'll come to the smaller room my friend lives in this room so yeah we'll not go much in detail but you get the general idea right a big bed again the same window layout cover for this room is also pretty big she has a studio light for some reason but it looks nice she has a table a bookshelf and still a lot of space over here and this is the smaller room so yeah this is pretty much it in terms of a room uh, this is again a spare closet the same the size that you saw for you know common stuff this is the restroom uh there's always a bathtub uh in these restrooms so yeah pretty nice uh, all the time hot water supply next we come to the again we come back to the living room so you can see pretty big space usually people also have someone staying in this part of the room and this is used as a common hangout area so otherwise you know you can use the entire living room then we come to the kitchen so pretty big kitchen pretty big kitchen two to three people can cook at the same time this is not an induction flame this is a gas flame so lots of storage spaces over here i uh, will just turn off the light so yeah this was the entire apartment now we go back to the editing room i'll see you there so that was the apartment tour video most of the unfurnished apartments are of similar nature in US and again furnishing an unfurnished apartment is not expensive. Alright so that's it for this video. I hope so you found this video helpful and it will help you make better decisions when finalizing a house in this country. And if you're still watching till the end make sure to check out my other social media handles. I'll link all of them in the description and if you want to see another video in this series I'll link the playlist also. I'll see you in the next video but before you hop off make sure to smash the like button. It really helps with the channel growth. Also feel free to share this video in your student groups or potential US student groups. Thank you for watching. Sayonara.